In my first video, I showed you some of the tools you can use on a budget to take great underwater photos. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the tips and techniques that you can use to take great underwater photos with very little equipment. first thing to do is to get to know your camera. You've chosen your camera, you're happy with it. Get to know your camera when you're sitting on the couch at home rather than when you're bobbing up and down in the water. The last thing you want is for your model to be impatiently waiting for you while you're fiddling about with your camera trying to figure out the best way to, to take the shot and what setting you need it to be on, trying to adjust the white balance, all that stuff. Do that at home, figure out what you're going to have it on and basically set it to that. When you get to the beach you want to have a, an actual checklist or a mental checklist. Make sure you've got everything set up correctly before you hit the water. It's so much easier to change things before you hit the water rather than after. So do I have an empty SD card? Is the battery fully charged and in there properly? Are the settings all set to where they need to be. Is the water seal correctly strapped down, tied down, however it's sealed up? Test that before you get in there. And these are mistakes that I still make after years and years of going under the water and taking photos. I can remember not very long ago getting out there, the light was beautiful, the sun was setting, I had a willing model and I realized my SD card was full and I had to swim all the way back to shore. It's a real pain in the neck. Just make sure you go through this mental checklist before you get in the water. One more thing that I didn't mention in my first video is an essential piece of gear, and that is flippers. When you're taking photos under the water, you need your hands free in order to, whatever camera you're using, you need, it, you need to have your hands free in order to take the photos, right? doesn't have to be anything this big, even something this big. Whatever it is, you need those hands. So you need a pair of flippers. If you're going to be swimming around, chasing after your model, uh, trying to get in the right position, get a pair of flippers because you're going to be swimming with your feet. Very important. The first thing to know about taking photos under the water is that the water filters the light. Even the clearest of clear waters, if you're lucky enough to have that, um, or even, obviously murky water, that light has been filtered. There's like several layers of filter between you and whatever it is you're taking a photograph of. So you need to take that into account. The easiest way to take that into account is to get as close to your subject as possible. Have a wide angle of, lens, uh, wide angle of view on your lens and fill the frame with your subject. On that note, make sure you know what your subject is. Is it the person swimming? Is it a group of people swimming? Is it a fish? Is it a piece of coral? Whatever it is, know what it is that you're taking a photograph of and frame it accordingly. You might be focused on swimming, diving, holding your breath, all those other things that you need to think about when you're in the water. But don't forget, you've got a subject and you want it to be framed nicely. On that note, get down to the same level as your subject. If you're looking down on your subject, which you tend to do, if you're floating on the water, you'll be looking down on your subject often. There's no harm in taking photos looking down. And in fact, I do this sometimes and it has not a good effect. But in order to get the right perspective, you need to be at the same level as your subject. This is the same above water often, but is definitely true below water. And that goes for whether it's a person, a fish, a piece of coral, whatever it is, to get that also the separation between the sandy bottom or even the bottom of the pool, wherever you're swimming and taking photos, and the subject, you need to be down at the same level as the subject. So make sure you do that. Do that from the beginning and you'll get good shots from the beginning. Another note on composition. If you're out in the sea, look around you for elements 
under the water which will help your composition so you're not just interested in your subject let's for example say that it's a person you're not just interested in the person how are they set against the background so I personally often look for big dark patches of seaweed growing on the ocean floor because a light subject with a dark seaweed background often brings out that subject or will bring out that subject even if you're in the swimming pool make sure that in the background there isn't the steps cutting through your subject like in the back or uh, a creepy crawly sort of uh, creeping off two-thirds of your frame these things are really important and they will elevate your images right from the get-go unless of course those elements are part of your composition in which case be deliberate about how you're placing them I've seen some amazing photos with subjects in swimming pools with a creepy crawly moving around them and it just looks amazing but it, it creates a narrative so unless you're creating that narrative in the image leave it out have your image as sparse as possible you've got your subject whatever context the context suits the subject so be very deliberate about your composition even if you're struggling to swim breathe hold your breath whatever it is that you're doing you need to think about all these things at the same time another thing you really need to be aware of when you're taking any photos is the light now I tend to take my best photos in the evening when you've got that beautiful side light brings out the definition in your subject particularly when you're taking photos near the surface of the water or just under the surface of the water you're going to get the best light in the same way as you do above the water in the morning or the evening so that's when I tend to focus my, my image making that doesn't mean you can't break the rules and use direct overhead light midday and I've taken some great shots then too but the best light I've always found is in the evening another element you might like to try that you might not do above the land so much is to shoot directly into the Sun and that's when you're gonna get those beautiful shafts of light through filtered through the water I've taken some gorgeous shots like that and you're almost breaking the rule in that you're shooting directly into the Sun if you you know your grandpa ever said to you don't shoot directly into the Sun well do shoot directly into the Sun because particularly when you're under the water you're going to get the water filtering that beautiful sunlight and particularly if you've got some elements in the water like it doesn't have to be crystal clear sometimes when the water is not crystal clear is actually when you get better images because it, it plays with the with the sunlight so do try that Try different angles with the light at the side and see where you get to. Pay attention to what your camera's focusing on. I'm going to assume you're using autofocus, which makes sense. But if you're not lucky enough to be swimming in crystal clear water, you've probably got little bits of debris, little bits of seaweed. Your camera, if um, those bits of seaweed are between you and your subject, your camera will often want to focus on those. Now, that's fine if you want to focus on those, but you might not want to focus on those. So just be aware of that. You don't want to think you've got an amazing shot, get back to land and find that actually it's all out of focus. So be aware of that. A way to compensate for that potentiality is if you can adjust the aperture, make the aperture a little smaller, so a larger number, and a greater depth of field, and you're far more likely to have things in focus than if you have a shallow depth of field. The other thing is to take loads of photos. A lot can happen in a short space of time when you're under the water. Now, I had to fight this impulse to not do this when I first started taking photos under the water because I'm not a spray and pray type of photographer. I, I like to compose. I like to make sure I know what I'm photographing and then take the shot. Under the water, let that go. Just let it go and if you can set your frame rate higher set it higher take as many shots as possible and then just cull them afterwards 
because some are going to be out of focus, far more are going to be out of focus than you normally do have above water, far more are not going to be framed because you're swimming about and you might be flailing a bit, um, but trust me on this, take as many photos as you can because that way you're going to be assured of getting some really great images. The last thing guys is to always shoot in RAW, always, assuming your camera will allow it because the white balance, the exposure, all those settings you will definitely or almost certainly want to change once you finish taking your photos when you're back in front of your computer. So set your camera to RAW, get into that habit above water as well as below water. The last thing I'm going to talk about is reviewing. Reviewing is important, reviewing the images you've just taken. What I would suggest, what I do, is not to review when you're out there taking photos. When you're out there taking photos, focus on taking photos. Don't focus on reviewing what you've just taken. But when you get back to the beach, do review. So in the five minutes that you, you're taking a break from all that swimming and exerting exerting yourself is that that's when you want to review and the re there is a really good reason for this the reason is that even if you come back to this cove or this beach or wherever it is that you're taking photos at the same time tomorrow you're not guaranteed but often is the case that the light uh, the quality of the water has changed so what you feed back into your imagery won't be exactly the same. Whereas if it's on the same day, the conditions are the same, the light's the same, your subject often is the same. So you can look at your images, review what's working, what's not working, then go out and refine it. So to me, that's so important, guys, to review on the beach, in between sessions, on the same day. Which is not to say you don't review at the end of the day as well, when you get back home, and feed that back in in a in a sort of larger loop but you're feeding back in in smaller loops as well so that's it guys I hope this video has helped a little bit if if it has then please like and subscribe to my channel that really helps and I really appreciate it. if I get some good feedback then I'll definitely be doing some more videos on some of the elements that I've only just touched on today so if you're interested in that I uh, would really appreciate if you subscribe. Bye for now. <laughs> Bloody mozzies everywhere.